What's poppin' royal tea sippers? Your man been back with more scorching hot tea to burn holes through those unworthy tums of yours. Today we're talking about the ultimate injustice plaguing one particular salty duchess, Meghan Markle's continued banishment from the royal jewel vault. So, I know you are excited for more, but before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss the explosive content we have in store. So now, if you've been following this never-ending makes it saga, you know full well that access to the firm's priceless tyros and jewels is an exclusive privilege strictly reserved for legit, working members of the monarchy. Not a privilege that gets extended to civilian grifters who quit the fans solely to chase stateside, zealous celebrity infamy. Makes perfect sense too when you think about it. Why on God's green earth would the royals ever entrust their ancestral treasures to a deadbeat family outcast looking to monetize and sully their brand at every turn? I certainly wouldn't lend out any priceless family heirlooms to an opportunistic identity burglar trying to steal my legacy for clout. Meghan's complete and utter banishment from the royal jewel vault is one of the few domains where the firm actually played its cards perfectly. An easy decision to deny it demonstrated bad faith actor access to invaluable symbols of aristocracy after she repeatedly trashed the institution delivering them in the first place. But naturally, the lifeblood of Meghan Markle's entire shtick consists of constantly manifesting her feelings and main character persecution complexes. This broad can't resist injecting herself into situations specifically designed to maximize personal grievances over things she has no actual claim to, like wearing fancy ancestral family jewels belonging to people she abandoned. Just take this past weekend as a prime example of the Duchess' fantastical delusions of grandeur where she found yet another excuse to scream in seething resentment watching someone else get lavish with the royal trappings she can now never access. See, while the rest of the world was fawning over Buckingham Palace's release of stunning throwback wedding photos honoring Queen Mary of Denmark's 20th anniversary, Macon was undoubtedly at home seething over the bejeweled head-turners being muddled by another aristocratic rival instead. I'm talking about the Countess of Wessex herself, Sophie Rhys Jones, absolutely slaying the Denmark royal wedding in 2004 while decked out in full regal regalia, including her breathtaking £1.25 million Anthemian Tyra on glamorous display for the whole world to admire. Just let that obscene valuation sink in for a moment. This countess rolled up to a foreign wedding fresh print style wearing over a million bucks worth of ancestral crown jewels glistening atop her upswept blonde tresses like the ultimate slay queen from central casting. An entire condo's worth of iced-out opulence, radiating unassailable big dog royal energy. Meanwhile, you just know our desiccated doppelganger duchess put upon back in Montecito spent every waking the nosecund hate-shaming those Sophie photos while fuming that stunning Tyra should be mine. I'm the real queen over here, not this twee countess cosplayer hanger on. Just picture it fam. Megan pouring obsessively over every frame of the royal wedding photo set squinting through her prescription hatred goggles while trying to invoke laser eye beams of destruction for the biggest inbound self-pity party this side of the Pacific, working herself into a cataclysmic meltdown spiral because she'll likely never get to experience such delirious hyphen privilege as a shunned monarchical exile. No matter how hard she still LIRPs on the title of Duchess or dresses up as Princess Makes Believe on streaming content, as far as the ancestral powers that be are concerned, Megan can take her slapdash production value and appropriation fetishes and kick rocks. There'll be no bank-breaking royal jewels leaving the vault for her toxic clutches to degrade for profit anytime soon. In an alternate, just world, you'd think realizing the priceless treasures unlocked exclusively for legitimate aristocracy would become the ultimate reality check for a lifelong hanger-on like Megan. An admission that may be endlessly antagonizing and cash trashing one of the world's great inherited institutions might mean forfeiting your privileges to partake in its grandeur. Just common sense boundary enforcement really. But we all know reality has never once shaken Meghan Markle's unbreakable aura of delusional grandeur before, have we? This is the textbook main character syndrome poster child we're talking about here. A hollow void of narcissistic neediness which no amount of privilege denial, public humiliation or heartless cash grabbing can ever fully satiate. You can practically hear the disgruntled wailing coming from her Montecito safe room right now as she stares longingly at the internet's freeze frames of Sophie, Countess of Wessex living her real-life princess fantasies. Those priceless crown jewels could have been mine if the royals weren't so dreadfully cold and racist against me. 
I totally deserve to rock at that Queen Mum Kira for my trashy Windsor wedding. Classic Megan taking zero accountability for her inability to keep her overinflated ego in check while floating on an earned golden handout clouds back during her brief working royal tenure. How dare the firm restrict her from pillaging their dynastic treasures just because she treated that privilege as a disposable resource for yet more fame trolling and brand exploitation at the family's expense. Apparently Benedict Arrogance always finds a way to twist adversity into her own self-flagellating martyr fantasies though. Rather than have any ounce of self-awareness, Megan simply doubling down on the persecution narrative against her former in-laws for protecting their own interests against her grifter havoc. Like, what did she truly expect would happen when her bad faith became too blatant for the firm to keep placating? Open-ended access to bottomless ancestral jewels as her new playthings despite renouncing any obligations to the people entrusting them to her. I thought this narcissist was supposed to be an ubermensch intellect lording over us mere mortals. That's probably the most galling deficit of Megan's self-sabotaged circumstances too. How uniquely pathetic and self-created her e exile from aristocratic privilege really was. She didn't get Vincent van Gogh out of Dutch royalty for espousing dangerous revolutionary ideals or suffer for her passionate dissidence against the status quo. She very literally just kept crapping all over the royal family's dignity for publicity until they finally put foot down. And for that perpetual stain on her character, Megan now gets the ultimate punishment, permanently benched from the very thing pumping oxygen into her main character addiction all along. She'll never again get to feel those intoxicating highs of wielding ancestral credibility as a legitimate working royal while sidestepping the accompanying responsibilities. I'm sure that poisoned chalice of truth burns far worse on the parched royal banishee's psyche than all the scarletons stitched onto her consciousness combined. To forever be denied an exclusive privilege, her entire supervillain origin story hinges of the very institution she endlessly revolted against out of spite. How rich is that insult to literal injury? So, what do you think will happen next in the Sussex's saga? Well, only time will tell. But don't worry, I'll be back soon with more scalding hot tea. But before closing in, you know the drill, like, subscribe, and share this video to spread the word. Until next time, folks, bye for now.